Where's my glass of wine? I'm gonna get crazy. I'd love to have, but unfortunately I'm filming. The streets are pretty empty. People are uh, like in a weird mood. Wow, well, I think it's gonna look great in the evening yeah. salon. Yeah. And upstairs? Fine, fine. My name is Anna. I'm an English former fashion and textile designer. I moved to Paris, age 23, to work for the French couture house Bauman and stayed for the croissants, the wine, and of course for Philip, a filmmaker from the South Tyrolean Alps. After 10 amazing years, getting married, buying and renovating two homes and having two babies, we decided city life was no longer for us. Philip had been dreaming of buying a chateau since the day we met and finally convinced me to start looking. We came to visit Chateau gonville sur fleur Despite being in quite poor condition and needing a complete renovation, we immediately fell in love. In May 2019, we got the keys to the chateau, our new home. With a tight budget, we had no choice but to do most of the renovations by ourselves. We're learning new skills as we go, building muscles we never knew we had, and getting creative to make the chateau as personal as possible whilst preserving its historic features. It's all part of this crazy family adventure and we wouldn't change it for anything. Two weeks ago, we managed to install a lock burner and to hang a chandelier in our evening salon. Now, Anna has only a few days left to finish upholstering chairs and sofas before our first paying guests of this year arrive. This chair is actually a really difficult chair to upholster and I am an amateur. I have never studied upholstery. I'm just kind of learning and winging it as I go along. The chair is actually in a really good state. I, I can turn it around and you can have a look. But you can see it's been professionally upholstered, but it just hasn't been finished for some reason. There's a lot of hand stitching and there's a lot of shape in, in, the sh in the chair that we have to try to create. But I'm really happy because through our Instagram, I'm in touch with a lovely lady called Jodi, and she is a professional upholsterer. And she has seen me working on this and she's been giving me loads of tips. So thank you so much, Jodi. I will put her link in the description of this episode. But yeah, it's a learning curve, this chair. It's very technical. And I found this really beautiful fabric, which is, you know, very thick and has a lovely texture. Um, the only problem is, because of the thickness, it's pretty tricky to get some of the pleating areas nice and clean, but it will look beautiful, so it'll be worth it. So I already kind of created a rough pattern, something to work with. I've got my center line here and my center line on here, so I can make sure I match those up. These are new scissors, but they're already blunt. I think I need to invest in some new ones. Maybe I shouldn't have used them for cutting barbed wire. What were you cutting? <laughs> I'm kidding. These are my scissors only for fabric. No one's allowed to cut paper with them. Yeah. They'll, get they'll go blunt. But you've been a bit stressed this morning and I wonder why. Is it because there is a pressure to get that thing finished in, say, five days? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Why didn't we just buy some chairs online, like finished chairs? Good question. So the main and most difficult part of working with stripes is making them and keeping them straight. <laughs> so is it a bad idea to make a stripey chair? Does it make your life much more difficult? It's not a bad idea, it's just a little bit, a little bit extra work in keeping all the stripes in place. To be honest, at the beginning I wasn't a real fan of the idea of a stripey chair, but in reality when the fabric arrived and I saw it in the room against the blue wall, seeing it coming together, I, I really think it's a really, really good choice, Anna. So you do have good ideas from time to time. Here is a bit wonky, is that normal? <laughs> hours later. <laughs> yeah, it's a slow process and I'm getting a little stuck here because as you can see <laughs> I've got this like weird thing happening with the fabric. It should be lovely and smooth and you know no extra bits of fabric and it's all fine over here but in here it's I don't know why it's doing something very weird and I'm just cutting here. Yeah to sort of open it up because then it releases the fabric. Question is how far to go before... You can see it. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm probably really not doing what I should be doing, but this is, this is my solution. The difficulty here is obviously pinning it in place because normal pins don't really work. They don't hold it. I don't know what these are for. What are these for? I just found them in the kitchen drawer and they are perfect pins for upholstery because they're nice okay. and chunky. No, I know what it is. They are for the shells. Yeah. Big or no are they called? Mm -hmm. Sea snails and you use these to get them out of the shell. Okay. And to upholster vintage <laughs> chairs. Two hours later, I, I think know. you're still struggling with that little piece there. I'm okay now. I have wasted and lost two hours, but I had to create this new piece here. So now we've got a seam here, but it's definitely working much better. It really looks nice, yeah. But I think it might be a late one tonight because I want to try to almost, I, I would love to finish it today if possible. So. so I do story time in Boston with the kids again? Yes. Yeah. That's your job. So yeah. I can get on and do this. Like for the last week <laughs> since you started your new life as, a, as an upholstery professional. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, nine o'clock in the evening. You're still here. Kids are in bed. But it looks good. I'm still going. Still going. Oh, where's my glass of wine? Well, it's not finished yet, the chair. So okay. You know the rules. And it's still not working. I'm going to get crazy. So within the last two years, the most difficult thing in renovating the shop is that chair, isn't it? I might not have a long upholstery career. <laughs> well, now you understand why it's so expensive to get things upholstered. That's true. I do appreciate it a lot more now. Don't know if we would have bought the chair if I realized how difficult it was to upholster. Couldn't you, instead of stitching it in here, bring it down here and, and staple it, it into the wood? Yeah. I hadn't actually thought of that. <laughs> well, I think if that's the solution... I'm not actually sure if it is, though. I, ne I need to figure out if it's... I right. think it is. Let's see. Just don't... Yeah, you know, just admit it. No. I didn't know that you were the expert upholsterer. <laughs> it's doing a bit... something a little bit funny here. Well, it can't be funnier than what it did before. Well, look. Yeah, that was before, it was there before. Come on, you, you tried to make it look... It was look, perfect. Before. It was, yeah, it was perfect, exactly. It was absolutely perfect. It never looked as good as it does now. No, that, there's a fly in my head. That's not a fly, it's a, it's a little devil. <laughs> what would you do if the first guest who comes and sits in that chair spills a glass of red wine? <laughs> Cry. Philip, what are you doing? Well, it's just a matter of brute force, and that's where I'm really good at. So, <laughs> it's getting better. What happened? I cut myself, but that's not the problem. It's going to... As long as you don't bleed on it. Oh, that's your worry? Yeah. <laughs> not my well-being. Okay. Not on my fingers. <laughs> I know you would like to, but... It's quite hard to do this, I can hold a camera. Yeah. I don't actually know where I'm doing it. And you do it left-handed, so I'm a bit worried about my fingers. Click. Yeah. One more. No, not the same. Yeah, here. Yeah. Ay! No. Ah! Okay. You scared me! <laughs> it's looking a little better. I think it looks as good as it gets. And then, as a finishing touch, we put a cushion on the, on the chair. Nobody sees the problem. To hide it. To hide it. Philip, this is how we spend our Saturday nights. Yes. It's nice. I think, if I think back how, how we wasted our time for years in partying and doing other things, going to the cinema, why would you do that if you can stretch fabric on, a, on an old vintage chair? It's so much more fun. So romantic, isn't it? <laughs> it's so romantic. And occasionally shout at each other, or systematically shout at each other. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just making some piping. Um, this is to finish off some of the um, parts of the chair where we have to sort of hide the join. So I've cut some fabric on the bias, which means like on the diagonal of the fabric, so it has some stretch. And then putting some cord inside and then using um, a zipper foot so I can get in really close. 
So it will basically look like this. It will be nice and clean. I can staple gun the piping onto the chair and then I can just fold my fabric over and make a nice seam like that. Well, it starts looking amazing, Anna. It's getting there, no? Yeah. So that's the piping uh, that I made earlier. I see. But you're out of arms. focus. I'm out of focus. Yeah, yeah, you're a bit out of focus today. Maybe it's better at this time of night. <laughs> hide the hide the dark circles. Done, I think. I think it looks yeah. okay. I think it looks okay. Looks heavy. I'd love to have, but unfortunately I'm filming. <laughs> Luckily, I'm pretty strong these days. Looks very nice. Happy. I need one more to do. And then the two sofas. And the curtains. And the curtains. And that's it. <laughs> It's so quiet here today. The kids are out of house, no guests, and Anna's gone as well. What happened? We had some guests staying in the green room and they liked the wallpaper there that Anna made and they liked it so much that they called Anna and asked Anna if she could come to Paris and design the wallpaper for their place, which is yeah, great news for Anna. Uh, as if we didn't have enough things to do here. That said, I really like being here on my own today. However, there's a lot of things to do, so I can't just stay here and do nothing. Horrible weather outside, isn't it? Just a cup of tea. It's the kids' playroom. A bit messy, but other than that, nice place to relax. I thought it was your little playmate. He looks broken hearted. I bet when he heard Gutman's story, he thought he had me. What is it? <laughs> the uh, stuff that dreams are made of. Huh? Hey, my love. How's Paris? All right. Yeah. Good. Just, just really, really busy here. You know, the. Fourth bedroom upstairs, plasterboard. Yeah, I know, but I want to get it done. Hold on a second. Sorry. Yeah, all right. You too. Yeah, have a good time. See you tonight, love you.
I'm actually in Paris today. I had to come here for some work and it's a little strange to be back. Um, it's been a while since I've been in Paris. It's been tricky with everything going on to, to get back here and I've kind of preferred to stay in the countryside, but I had to come for work. So I thought I'd just take the opportunity to quickly come into the 18th arrondissement and have a look around some of the shops. What I love in this area is it's just full of fabric shops and there's a lot of shops that have, they sell like coupon of fabric, which is basically off cuts, little pieces of fabric. So you can see here, I'm gonna go and have a little rummage. It's like treasure and, uh, and often you can get them for really good prices. So I haven't got much time, but I want to see if I can find some little off cuts that I could maybe use for making some lampshades, making some cushions and even maybe some upholstery for some bed heads. I love all of these striped fabrics. They're jacquards, beautiful. Yeah, it's really strange. I lived here for over 10 years, but it's been about eight months since I was in Paris. Streets are pretty empty. People are like in a weird mood. I'm looking forward to getting back in the car and getting back to Normandy. To the chateau to be honest unfortunately it's too late to start plasterboarding upstairs but if i can at least do this job that i asked me to do i might get away with it i actually don't know what that is to me it looks a bit like a candle holder from some modernist church from the 60s it's gonna make a really nice lamp now this could be a really quick job in cleaning or take forever let's see Ever. Ideally, I would use some metal wool, at least that's what it's called in France. Um, but I'm using a kitchen sponge, far from ideal. We're getting there. Now I understand why Anna wanted me to do that. This is as far as I'm going today. You couldn't see the time lapse, but it took me probably about four to five hours. I'm sure there's a hundred ways of doing this better than I did. But sometimes the effort to find an ideal way to do things is more tiresome than just do the stupid manual labor. Oh. Hey. Hey. How was Paris? Oh, it was a long day. But, um, no, but I did find some really nice fabric, look. Yeah, I see. Love that. I thought that would be, be nice for some cushions. Oh, definitely, definitely. And how did you get one? Look at this. <gasps> this come up so nice. Yeah. Oh, did it take a long time? Yes, several hours actually. Yeah? yeah. Oh, wow, well, I think it's going to look great in the evening yeah. salon. Yeah. And upstairs? Fine, fine. Yeah. Should we have a look? Uh, let's do it tomorrow. Why, why don't we have a glass of wine? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and if you'd like to watch more videos right now, 
take a look at our Patreon page and see all the extras we offer to our supporters. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.